Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS F16C Viper video, we'll explore some of the new features and changes coming to the DCS Viper later this month. Our primary goal is to resolve as many of the roadmap items as possible. I'm going to be covering a lot of different items in this video, so you can find timestamps in the video descriptions to jump to the items of interest. Let's get started. Okay, so first, let's take a look at automatic laser designation. And of course, right now we only have the manual method, in which we need to hold down the weapon trigger to fire the laser manually. So first, let's get things set up. We're gonna to go to air ground master mode. Go to CCRP bombing mode, of course. Turn on the laser. Let's bring up the targeting pod or TGP. Make that our sensor of interest. Let's zoom in a bit. Make it a FLIR and target management switch forward to designate. Again, it's all uh, pretty much all had at this point for you guys. Next, let's take a look at the meat of this to set up the laser and automatic designation. So we'll go to list up on the ICP, go to zero miscellaneous, five laser. And now up on the DED, of course we have our TGP code we're gonna be firing at 1688. We have our laser spot track code 1688. And what we're interested here is our laser start time. This could be anywhere between 8 and 176 seconds. So let's dob her down, highlight it, and for this example, let's do 12 seconds. So 12, enter, and we're good to go. Take off the autopilot. Now what's going to happen is uh, 12 seconds before predicted weapon impact, the laser is going to automatically start firing at 1688. And then 30 seconds after impact, it will automatically shut off. So just doing a standard CCRP attack. There's our toss cue. Waiting to reset. Coming down. And pick up. And again, this will apply to uh, GPU 10, 12, and 24. So we can see our time to impact, 20 seconds. And again, once that hits 12, you should see that laser automatically come on and start lazing at 1688. And 12, laser's on. And boom. And again, about 30 seconds now, it will automatically shut off. So you can see, easy peasy. Now, speaking of laser ranging, we can also use laser ranging in CCIP now. And this is going to give us a better CCIP bombing accuracy. So let's get things set up. Go to ground master mode. CCIP, already set. Let's go to pairs. Laser on. Let's bring up the TGP. And all we're going to do is, once we're about 30 seconds away from that attack, we're going to go to the second detent on the trigger, and that's going to fire the laser in ranging for 30 seconds to give us better CCIP accuracy. And as you may recall, when we're in CCIP mode, the uh, TGP line of sight is automatically only slaved to the CCIP point. Okay, 10 miles, let's check off about 15 degrees. Back to CCIP. Okay, second detent on the trigger. We can now see the laser is firing, 1688. So it's giving us nice ranging. And again, it's going to continue firing automatically, giving us ranging for 30 seconds. the targets below. Okay, it's pulling to about a 30 wire. So 
So you can see, by using the laser range in the CCIP, you can get a lot more accuracy now. Now, with all this talk about the uh, laser and the targeting pod, we also have an additional targeting pod function coming. That's called the Targeting Pod Attitude Advisory Function, also called the AFF. And this is going to appear as a big flashing red box on the targeting pod if you're in a potentially unsafe attitude condition, which is pretty easy if your uh, head's down on that targeting pod. But for it to be shown, there has to be some conditions that are met. So we have to make sure that we're here to ground mode. Targeting pod needs to be on, of course. Our A low value will need to be above our current altitude. So we'll go to A low. Let's stop her down to our MSL floor. Right now it's 5,000 feet. Let's put this to 25,000 feet. So we're below it and enter. Altitude. Altitude. See out. And now with these conditions, uh, if there's one or two conditions met, we'll get the warning. Uh, first, take off autopilot. If we roll more than 75 degrees, see it flashing there, or if our angle down is greater than 20 degrees. And again, this is based on the gun bore line, not the flight path marker. This can certainly be a helpful function uh, to keep you from augering in when you're uh, fixated on that target pod. Now, while we're on the subject of air to ground, let's talk about three more functions. Uh, first, let's talk about the HOTAS bombing mode cycle button. And that's the uh, nose wheel steering slash uh, missile step switch on your control stick. And we can press this. It's probably the easiest way to cycle through your bombing modes. Now, previously, we cycled through some additional modes that should not have been there, uh, but with the update, we're just going to have it to CCIP, CCRP, dive toss, and then back to CCIP, which is correct. The next item is manual bombing mode. And in fact, this is already in the open beta, but I just haven't had a chance to talk about this in a video yet. So, as you might imagine, go to air to ground master mode, on the bombing modes, we'll go to manual. Down here on the HUD control panel, we have the depressible reticle switch. Right now it's an off. We're going to set it to the middle, which is primary. Once we do that, up on the HUD now, we have our depressible reticle displayed. To move it up and down based on the mill setting, we'll use the depressible reticle wheel here. And you'll notice we have the mill setting displayed here, right above the arm safe indication. The nice thing about this is we have all the other HUD symbology still displayed, just not the actual bombing symbology. If we want to go a step further, we can move the depressible reticle switch to standby. And now all we have is the depressible reticle in the mill setting. Now I'm going to attach a bombing chart of the different mill settings and conditions in the description of this video. And the last uh, air to ground item I'll mention today is the inclusion of the alternate weapon release button, which is the uh, red button here on the left auxiliary panel. And this works both for air to air and air to ground. So for instance, I were to go to uh, air to air master mode, bring out manual, Release in pairs. You can hold down the red button and release a couple Mark 82s. Or if I were to go to MRM mode, hold down the button, launch an AMRAM. Again, I'm not sure how much you could really use this, but for the sake of completeness, we wanted to make sure that the button was at least functional. Next, let's talk about a couple new air-to-air -air elements. Uh, the first of which is the addition of the Spotlight Scan Radar Mode, which should be pretty handy in locking up targets at longer ranges. So all we're going to do is we're going to place the uh, cursor over the target, maybe lead it just a little bit, 
and press and hold the target management switch forward for greater than one second. Allow it to do a 10 degree azimuth and elevation scan. Release after it does about three or four uh, frames and it should lock up. And again, this should make uh, locking up targets at greater ranges a bit more easy. The other error element is a change in the CRM HOTAS selection. And what I mean by that is uh, previously, if you wanted to change between range wall search and track wall scan, you would hold the target and manage some switch to the right greater than 0.5 seconds and then release. With the new version, what you'll do is you'll press the target and manage some switch to the right greater than one second and it will automatically change regardless of when you release that switch. When Cole starting aircraft in the real world, an important part of that is running the built-in test for the flight control system, which we'll be adding in the next update. To do so, we'll come back here to the flight control panel, and we'll set the bit switch from off to bit. When set to bit, the run light will turn green. Once the entire test is done, the switch will automatically move back to off, and the light will extinguish. As we watch the Flickus bit test run, you probably noticed the AN ALQ131 ECM pod. Now, although it will behave the same as the existing AN ALQ184 ECM modes, the option to load the AN ALQ131 pod will be available. Another external item that I'll talk about today is a correction to how the external wing tanks are jettisoned. Currently, when you jettison the wing tanks, only the wing tanks are jettisoned and not the pylons. This is incorrect, and in the update, both the pylons and the wing tanks will jettison at the same time. When the gun is fired, the gun gas purge door will now open to remove gun gases from the gun compartment. Additionally, we've added an animation to the spinning barrels of the M61 cannon. There are many more changes coming in the next update, and we ask you to review the change log once available. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.